What's going on, folks? Happy Labor Day. Welcome to another edition of Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, just finished the AEW All Out pay per view, and this was quite a show. This was a jam packed show with 15 matches. Most of them were good. There were a few that were bad or had really, really terrible finishes, but for the most part, it was an enjoyable pay-per-view. So, let's go ahead and dig into my thoughts on the results. So, starting out, we had four pre-show matches uh, as part of the AEW All Out Zero Hour segment at the beginning, which was at 7 p.m. So we had four matches. Uh, it kicked off with the Triple A World Mixed Tag Team titles on the line as the champs, Sammy Guevara and Ty Mello, defended those titles against Ruby Soho and Ortiz. And of course, the the pretty much the segment, the brawl started backstage with, of course. Ty Mello and Sammy Guevara getting chased by Ruby Soho and Ortiz in a pretty much a golf cart, um, which is something that's happened to Sammy Guevara at least a good three. I think this is probably the third time this has happened by now. Probably maybe third or fourth time that's happened. And of course, he got ran over, and you know that ushered his way into the into the ring, and the match officially started. Um. Shoutouts to uh, Ortiz rocking uh, rocking attire, paying tribute to Aja Kong, as Ruby Soho was rocking uh, attire and colors, paying tribute to Bull Nakano. So shout out to two very well known Joshi legends. But as far as the match, uh, it wasn't really a long match. Um, there are a lot of segments with Ty. Mello and Sammy Guevara kissing each mm -hmm. other during like a move or a sequence or whatnot. Um, of course, Anna J got involved as well. And apparently, near the end of the match, now uh, Ty and Sammy Guevara got the victory, but it looks like Ruby Soho suffered a broken nose near the end of this match. Um, and apparently, uh, word is that had been confirmed that she had, um, suffered a broken nose, but Ty Mello and Sammy Guevara are still your reigning AAA mixed tag team champions. Um, which, like I said, this match wasn't long. This was maybe like a, like a five or six minute match. It wasn't a long match. So it is what it is. Uh, next up, we had the FTW Championship on the line as the champ, Hook, defended against challenger Angelo Parker of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Of course, he was accompanied by Matt Menard. Um, Angelo Parker did have a little bit of momentum at one point, but once again, this was not a long match. This was maybe like a maybe like a barely a four minute long match but uh, as soon as uh, Hook cinched in the I think it's called the red run or you know pretty much the Taz mission he tapped out immediately um, Angelo Parker tapped out immediately but like I said he he got in a little bit of offense throughout the match but just was not enough and Hook did what he needed to do couple of suplexes, a submission, and it was all said and done. And Hook is still your FTW champion. So, I mean, that is what it is. And uh, I forgot what the dude's name was. Um, something Brunson? I forgot what his name was. But as they were beating down Hook... He came in to even the odds and pretty much 
pull Angelo and Matt Menard off of Hook and pretty much scared them off. And then they had a moment and whatnot. So that was a little ending segment there. But I, I forgot what his name was. It was something Bronson. But I forgot what his name was. Um, next up, we had the AEW All-Atlantic Championship on the line as the champion, Pac, defended against the returning Kip Sabian. Um, definitely good to see Kip Sabian back. And it looked like the crowd was on his side throughout most of this match. And, you know, it was it was just really good to see him, you know, make his in-ring return. So, definitely good to see Kip Sabian back. And actually had a good match. Had a really good match with Pac. And, you know, it was back and forth. And it was really good to see, you know, Kip Sabian, you know, back in the ring. And, you know, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a long while. So, it's just really good to see him back. But, you know, it was a good back-and-forth match. But Pac did hit the black arrow and was able to pick up the victory and retain the title. And, of course, there was a segment afterwards where Kip Sabian kept arguing with his with his box. And, you know, we had a face-off between Pac and uh, Orange Cassidy, which, you know, it looks like Orange Cassidy, you know, wants another shot, you know, to at the title. He wants a shot at the title. So... You know, we'll have to see what happens with that, but maybe an angle that leads to Orange Cassidy getting a shot at the AEW All-Atlantic Championship. And then the final pre-show match. This was an excellent match. This was the rematch between Tomohiro Ishii, the Stone Pit Bull, taking on Eddie Kingston. Now, of course, their first meeting was back at Capital Collision, very, very excellent match. Hard fought back and forth. But Tomohiro Ishii did win the first match. But tonight was a whole different story. And these two tore each other up. I mean, we're talking chops. Back and forth. Clotheslines. Back and forth. I mean, these two were just dishing out the punishment over and over. Both had, like, beat red chests from all the chops and strikes. I mean, they must have both thrown like at least a good 30 or 40 chops apiece in this match. It was crazy. But, I mean, it's expected with these two. It's expected. And, you know, Tomohiro Ishii looked really strong. I mean, he kicked out after the back fist. Um, you know, it was definitely a hard-fought match. But Eddie Kingston was able to get the uh, version of the Northern Light Bomb and was able to get the 1, 2, 3. I mean, he hit it out of nowhere, too. Hit it out of nowhere and was able to get the 1, 2, 3 and pin Tomohiro Ishii. So they're now 1-1. One one. They're 1-1. One and one. And the crowd was greatly behind Eddie Kingston, but, the, but a good bit of the crowd was behind Tomohiro Ishii as well. It was kind of back and forth. Um, afterwards, Eddie Kingston tried to show respect to Tomohiro Ishii, but he wasn't having that. He wasn't having that. But I do hope that these two will have a rubber match. You know, let's let's break the tie. I hope they'll have an opportunity, you know, maybe at full gear or something like that. I would love to see them have one more match break the tie. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on AEW. It could be at New Japan Pro Wrestling as well. But I would like to see them break the tie. Because these two have excellent chemistry in the ring. And they just put on two back-to-back -back excellent matches against each other. So I would love to see a rubber match for them to break the tie. And, um, but yeah, uh, decent pre-show. Like I said, those last two matches were really, really good. So, decent pre-show. Okay, let's get into... The main card. So the main card started off with the casino ladder match. So the competitors that came through were Wheeler Yuta. Uh, yeah, Wheeler Yuta and Claudio Castanoli 
you had Ray Phoenix, you had Penta El Cerro Mero, you had Roosh, Andrade El Idolo, Dante Martin. So, um, Phoenix, actually Ray Phoenix and Wheeler Yuta started off this match. But um, one by one, the others came in. And it was, you know, it was definitely a, a spot fest. There was even a, a, a moment where Claudio had the, the ladder stacked up into, like, a form of an X. And, you know, kind of like an upside-down X or something like that. It was, it was, really, it was really interesting. Um, saw a Canadian Destroyer on the ladder that Penta did. I think Penta did that on Andrade. Andrade, that was a six spot. And just, you know, Dante doing a lot of springboard action onto the ladder. It looked like there was a, a segment where he was, he pretty much was like right dead touching the, the poker chip and he could have pulled it down, but didn't. Uh, Roosh, uh, had a couple of opportunities where he flew, did the, um, Tope Con Hiro, so that was really cool. Um, but when it was all said and done, you know, it was a lot of, a lot of action in this match, as expected. I mean, it's a ladder match. And then all of a sudden, the Joker... So first off, you know, there was man in a mask that got up the ladder, took the poker chip, turned out to be Stokely Hathaway. And then all of a sudden, you had Ethan Page, Lee Moriarty, Colton, and Austin Gunn of the Gun Club, and Morrissey, all in the ring wearing black, you know, have their mask off pretty much cleared everybody else in the ring. And then you had one guy come down with like this this um oni like mask, comes to the ring, Stokely Hathaway hands him the poker chip. And it looked like he was about to reveal himself, take his mask off, but he didn't. And pretty much that whole big group of folks Left the left the ring and went went to the back, and there you have it. The Joker, the Joker ended up winning this match. I mean, despite Stokely Hathaway pulling down the chip. See, that's that was the only thing I didn't like. Like it would have been nice if the Joker himself, even masked, if the Joker himself would have just pulled it down, and then you know the others could have cleared house and everything and unmasked. That's fine. But to have Stokely Hathaway actually pull down the chip and then hand it, like, I just felt like that part was cheesy. That part was really cheesy. You know, you know what I mean? But the Joker ended up winning the Casino Battle Royale, and which I will reveal later. Next up had pretty much one of my favorite matches, like one of my one of my top three, which was the finals of the AEW Trio World's Trios Championship. So the finals, it came down to the Elite, which are Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, versus the Dark Order, Alex Reynolds, Johnny Hungy, you know, John Silver, and Hangman Adam Page. This was an excellent match, and it was so great to see Kenny Omega back 100%. I mean, just going the distance, and it, he, he looked great. He looked great. He looked like his usual self again. He looked like the cleaner. So this was a very action-packed match, and honestly... It almost looked like the Dark Order was going to actually pull it off. Because we have to remember, the Dark Order still to this day hasn't won any championships. So, they came close. They came really close. And there was even a, a great segment of Johnny Hungy reversing the One Wing Angel attempt into a roll-up pin, which I thought was really cool. But, when it was all said and done, Hangman went for a buckshot. To Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega was able to duck. He hit John Silver. 
rolled them up for the one, two, three. And the Elite are your inaugural AEW World Trios Champions. And honestly, I'm not surprised. I know a lot of people wanted the Dark Order and Hangman to win, which I can understand, because like I said, they've never won any championships before. Of course, Hangman has, but it is kind of a bummer. I don't know how they're going to you know, play that off going forward with you know Hangman and the Dark Order. Don't know what they're going to do there, but I mean, I can't really be surprised at the outcome. I mean, the Elite... Picked up the victory. Kenny Omega is a champion in his return. So, I mean, I can't be surprised. I can't be surprised. But I love I love this match. It was very action-packed. It was definitely in my top three. Definitely in my top three. Next up, we had the AEW TBS Championship. As the champion, Jade Cardgill defended against Athena. Now, apparently, Jade Cardgill came to the ring repping gear uh, of She-Hulk. She had the She-Hulk gear. And this was not a long match. And honestly, I was very disappointed with this match. With this wasn't this wasn't even a five minute long match. And it was already bad enough that the baddies kept interfering. And despite Athena hitting an eclipse early, like gaining the momentum and then hitting Jade with an eclipse, of course, Baddie pulls out um Athena. It was either she pulled she pulled out Athena or the referee, one of the two. But yeah, and then it was only a matter of time, despite the attempts at interference, that Athena would get caught with a jaded, and just like that, Jade Cardgill, still your reigning TBS champion, and is now at 37-0. and 0. Not to mention, there were, you know, a few botches in this match as well. Which is, which is why I don't understand why they continue to keep this reign going on Jade Cardgill. Most of her matches have been sloppy. I mean, she's been able to, to bust out maybe one or two bangers in her entire streak. You know, I, I may give you three. I may give you three. But despite that, her matches have been sloppy. She doesn't sell. And a, and a good big percentage of her matches are botchy. And she doesn't sell. So I don't really understand the idea of keeping this title on Jade. I don't know what Tony Khan is seeing, but she's still very green. And just isn't really worthy of that championship other than it's another big body woman. You know, tall, strong, athletic. I mean, that's really all I feel like is, is the selling point for her to be the champion. And it's just, but it's not translating that well as far as in the ring. Especially not consistently. Especially if this is somebody that, that has yet to lose a match and is on a 37 win streak. It's just it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Not to mention putting away somebody like Athena in under five minutes. Not to mention even had help with the baddies. Which one of the baddies she doesn't even like. So it just it just makes no sense to me. Why she's still champion. And honestly, I mean, I know a lot of folks are saying, you know, Chris Statlander was probably the one that's going to do it. But Chris Statlander is going to be out and for a good while. And another part of me feels like they're going to have Jade Cardgill 
she probably won't lose until after she wins 50 matches. And I have a bad feeling that's that's what's going to end up happening. Is that she probably won't finally lose until she's won 50 matches. And that's and that's sad. Cuz she has not been a great champion. I'm just keeping it real. She hasn't been a great champion and definitely not worthy of a 37 and 0 streak. Especially when a good percentage of those matches were squash and not against real competitive talent. Let's just keep it real. But that was definitely one, one of the worst matches on the card. Not the worst, but one of the worst. Okay, next up we had the trios match. We had Wardlow and FTR taking on Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. Um... I mean, I did enjoy this match, especially being that the Motor City Machine Guns were in it. And, you know, they had their their uh, their segments. They had their, you know, offense that they were able to get in, which was really cool. Um, But, you know, being that FTR, you know, had uh, Dax Harwood's daughter uh, make an entrance, I, I figured once that happened that, they were gonna end up winning. As much, even though I wanted Lethal and the and the guns to win, once I saw Dax Harwood's daughter, I was like, yeah, FTR and Wardlow are winning. And I really feel for for Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal got destroyed at the end from the powerbomb symphony from Wardlow, and you know Wardlow got the the pen one two three, and it looked like the others were gonna you know surround. Wardlow and, and FTR and then all of a sudden Samoa Joe makes his return pretty much fights off um, Satnam Singh and Sanjay Dutt left in the ring alone Dax's daughter comes down breaks the pencil knocks him down and even pins him even pins Sanjay for a 1-2-3 so that was a nice little segment for uh, Dax's daughter. So that was, that was really cool. And welcome back, Samoa Joe. It's good to see him. You know, he's still uh, ROH uh, World Television Champion. So that was really good to see Samoa Joe. But um, if anything, we got a taste. We got a little taste of the Mach Motor City Machine Guns and FTR battling each other even though it was a trios match but i think you know what i think give it time give it time they may build something to where they may you know face each other at full gear or maybe have a segment where ftr invades impact maybe maybe bound for glory you know but the only thing I can say is give it time. We're going to eventually see Motor City Machine Guns versus FTR. You know, just straight up tag team match. It's going to happen. This was just a seed planet, and they gave the fans a taste. We got a taste. And it was a decent taste. It was a decent taste. But that's all we got was a taste because this was a trios match. So give it time. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of buildup, and they're going to finally have a legit tag team match. FTR versus Motor City Machine Guns. Just be patient. It's coming. I truly believe it's coming. But that was a pretty decent trios match. It was a pretty decent trios match. Next up, we had uh, Powerhouse Hobbs versus Ricky Starks. I was really disappointed in this match because it did it barely lasted like five or six minutes i was very disappointed and honestly i was kind of shocked to see powerhouse get the victory because i felt like you know felt like this was one ricky starks really needed especially considering powerhouse and whatnot it seemed like they kind of had the momentum but yeah, I, I really thought this match would have lasted longer. So I was really disappointed. Really disappointed. 
So, but Powerhouse Hobbs got the victory. You know, it was just, it was a bummer. It was a, it was definitely a bummer. But this storyline is going to continue. It's definitely not over between these two. But that, that match was way too quick. Next up, we had the AEW Tag Team titles on the line. And this was actually my favorite match of the card. This was my favorite match of the card. We had Swerve in our glory, the champs, Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland, defending against the acclaimed. And I tell you, there were so many great moments in this match. So many close falls. And honestly, it really... The acclaimed look extremely strong in this match. I mean, Anthony Bowens did a great job of selling the knee injury. Like, honestly, this, I have to say, was definitely the Acclaim's best match so far in AEW. Their best. And honestly, even though they did not win, they definitely deserve a tag title run soon. I don't know how soon because it wasn't that long ago that Swerve and Our Glory won the tag titles. So I think they need to hold on to the tag titles just a little longer. And they were definitely being treated like the heels in this match as well because the crowd was totally, fully behind the acclaim. And of course, you know, Billy Gunn was there, accompanied them as well. But, I mean, it was an excellent match. These two teams went back and forth. There were a lot of miscues from Swerve and Our Glory, but yet they still kept it together and was able to pick up the victory. But, man, the acclaim came so close. Max Caster and Anthony Bowens, they looked extremely strong in this match. It's, it'll be only a matter of time before they become... AEW World Tag Team Champions. It's 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 gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um, you know, Keith Lee tried to show respect after the match. Um, Billy Gunn gave in. The acclaim, not so much. But I definitely could see a, a rematch in the future between these two teams. And who knows, maybe Swerve in Our Glory may end up turning heel. You know, maybe there will be a follow-up on uh, Dynamite this, this week. But give it time. It's only a matter of time before the Acclaim do become World Tag Team Champs. It's, it's coming. It's coming. But that was definitely their best match so far in AEW. They looked really strong, and they, they came close. They came really close. And I would not have been mad if they had won. I would not have been mad. Um, Next up, we had the Fatal 4-Way for the interim AEW Women's World Championship. We had Hikaru Shida, we had Tony Storm, we had Jamie Hayter, and we had Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Um, I was definitely digging uh, Jamie Hayter's uh, new gear. Had that uh, that silver and white gear. I uh, thought that was really cool. Um, but most of all, I thought this I thought this match was good. All four ladies looked really good. Um, I know for you know a good bit of the match, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter were working together. And then, you know, there were some spots where Tony Storm and Hikaru Shida were working together. And there was a segment outside of the ring where Shida took a, a, a curb stomp. Looked like she was out of the match. And then all of a sudden she comes back wielding double kendo sticks. <laughs> so I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. But, you know, overall, I thought it was a good match. I thought it was a really good match. But when it was all said and done, Tony Storm emerged victorious. Um, but have to also make note, 
of the dissension that happened. Um, Jamie Hayter hit a rainmaker, and it looked like Jamie Hayter was about to win, but Britt Baker broke up the pin. And, of course, it was eventually going to happen, but it looks like potentially the friendship may be over between Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker. If, if, if that wasn't enough for that to pretty much lead to that them splitting, then it's probably right around the corner. It's probably right around the corner. But Tony Storm picks up the victory, and she is now your interim AEW Women's World Champion. Now, word is, originally, it's, it sounded like originally she was going to be the one to dethrone Thunder Rosa for the title if Thunder Rosa hadn't um, been dealing with an injury. So, something to keep in mind. But at least we know at some point she'll recover. They'll have the match, unification. And that'll probably be, you know, when Tony Storm beats Thunder Rosa, perhaps. But right now, Tony Storm is your interim AEW Women's Champion. So, I thought it was a good call. I know the crowd was greatly behind Jamie Hayter, and I wouldn't have been mad if Jamie Hayter won, but I, I think overall, Tony Storm made the most sense, but I wouldn't have been mad if Sheeta or uh, Jamie Hayter won. Dr. Britt Baker, she did not need that. But I, I think Tony Storm winning made the most sense. Okay, next up, uh, we had a singles match. Well, not really much of a singles match. Jungle Boy versus Christian Cage. Um, Jungle Boy came out, was looking for Luchasaurus to be accompanying him, came out the wrong tunnel, ambushed Jungle Boy, Choke slammed him off the stage onto the pyro grid, and then choke slammed him through a table, ringside. Aubrey Edwards, the ref, was begging and pleading to, you know, throw the match out. You know, you don't have to do this, but Jungle Boy was like, you know, ring the bell, ring the bell. He ate a spear, kicked out, and then ate a kill switch. And then that was it. One, two, three, that was it. I don't think that was even a like a 25 second. Shoot, that might not have even been 15 seconds. Well, nah, nah, because there was a kick out. But I, I'm willing to bet money that match lasted just under 30 seconds. It had to have been like 30 seconds. But um, Christian Cage picked up the victory, and we know for sure Luchasaurus turned his back on Jungle Boy and, you know, took took out Jungle Boy. So we clearly know that Jurassic Express is over and done. Now, word is that the match happened the way that it did because, unfortunately, Christian is apparently nursing an injury, and word is that it's a torn tricep, which is probably why he wasn't booked to do much, but just to, you know, squash, end it quickly. But what I think is going to happen, being that Luchasaurus did the biggest amount of damage, they're probably going to transition an angle where they'll have Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus feud while... Christian might be in the background, might be managing, and, you know, might do that until he fully heals from his injury. But I think that might be the direction that they go. You know, have a feud between Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, which I think would be good. You know, it makes sense. A feud makes sense. So, why not? And, of course, Jungle Boy's family was there. I think it was his sister and mother were there, and he just, he got destroyed. I mean... His back looked jacked up after being uh, choke slammed onto that pyro grid. But, yeah, that was pretty much the quickest match of the night. Um, We had singles match. Lionheart Chris Jericho versus the American Dragon Brian Danielson. Um, 
And this was definitely a, a excellent match. This was my third match. So my top three. Uh, this was my third match. Um, definitely enjoyed back and forth between these two. Saw a lot of strikes, a lot of submissions, a lot of signatures. Um, you know, definitely did what they did best. I mean, Lionheart, Chris Jericho. We saw the Walls of Jericho. We saw Lion Saw. We even saw the Lion Tamer. Um, Brian Danielson. Um, it was good that he busted out the cattle mutilation. I thought that was really cool. But um, it was definitely back and forth. And, you know, these two put on a banger of a match, as expected. But there was a spot where Jericho had Brian Danielson backed into a corner with referee Aubrey Edwards. Or actually, it was the other way around. And uh, Jericho slipped in a low blow while he was facing Aubrey Edwards trapped in the corner. You know, was able to hit a low blow on Brian Danielson, and then hit the Judas effect and pick up the 1-2-3. And Lionheart Chris Jericho defeats the American Dragon Brian Danielson. Now, uh, the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society comes out to celebrate with Jericho except for Daniel Garcia. Now, what does this lead to? Segment backstage, you know, Jericho's wondering why Daniel Garcia didn't come out and support and whatnot. And, of course, Daniel Garcia was like, you know, I knew you were going to win. I was rooting for you to win. But, you know, you can win without cheating. But yet you cheated to win. And then, of course, Jericho responded with, you know, the fact that Brian, uh, Daniel Garcia's got uh, another shot at the ROH Pure championship this coming dynamite i believe i believe it's going to be a two out of three falls um and jericho was like you're gonna win but me or the rest of the jericho appreciation society we're, we're not going to be out there you got you got to do it on your own so we'll have to see how how that goes but i think sooner or later definitely sooner or later daniel garcia will end up joining the Blackpool Combat Club. It's it's a matter of time. Just give it time. It's it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Seeds are already being planted. We got some dissension between Daniel Garcia and Chris Jericho, so it's only a matter of time before he joins the Blackpool Combat Club. Next up, we had the trios match. We had Darby Allin, Sting, Miro taking on the House of Black. And I love the House of Black entrance. That was a really cool entrance. Um, This was a decent match, but I really felt like it could have been longer. And I was actually kind of surprised that this was the match before the main event. I was really surprised with that. But uh, overall, it was a, it was a good match. Uh, definitely love seeing the House of Black compete. Especially Malachi Black with his... Muay Thai striking ability. I love when he puts together combos in the ring. Um, I was really surprised to see Sting bust out the mist. He actually spewed mist in the face of Malachi Black. And of course, you know, that eventually led to a scorpion death drop as well as a coffin drop. And then um, also was able to tie up Malachi Black into the to last the last supper pin to get the one two three. I was kind of bummed because I really wanted House of Black to win. I really did, and like I said, I did not expect to see Sting use Mist. I mean, he was already taking punishment while you know locking in the Scorpion. Deathlock. I mean, he was taking hits and kicks from Buddy Matthews and Brody King, but was withstanding it. But now that I think about it, I can't really be surprised. I do not think Sting has lost a match on AEW. I don't think he's lost a match, y'all. Unless I missed something, 
I don't think Sting has lost a match to this to this day on AEW. So and and House of Black had to suffer for that. You know, it was just it was a bummer. It was a bummer. And it was interesting that, you know, Miro was able to finally get on the same page because at first he did not want to tag in Darby Allen. But they did eventually get on the same page and they and they won the match. So they, they, they won a match, so but it was such a bummer. I I really felt like House of Black needed this victory, but as I said, I really don't think Sting has lost a match in AEW. So while I'm not a fan of the outcome, I can't be surprised because Sting was in the match. And then we had the main event. The main event was for the AEW World Championship. The champion, John Moxley, defending against CM Punk. Now, of course, the crowd was completely behind CM Punk throughout the match. And at least we got ourselves a legit match, which I felt like was going to happen. I mean, I felt like some sort of something was going to happen to pretty much redeem ourselves from the squash that we witnessed from Mox to CM Punk. And you know what? It was bloody. It was back and forth. John Moxley was very ruthless. I mean, he even had a segment where he, like, licked the blood. It was, oh, jeez, it was nasty. Um, But it was definitely back and forth. I mean... CM Punk kicked, kicked out of a Death Rider. Mox kicked, kicked out of a, a GTS in the beginning. And, you know, it, it, we kind of got a tease of a CM Punk squashing Mox at, at first. But, of course, he kicked out. But it was definitely back and forth. And then I think it pretty much took two GTSs in a row to finally put away Mox and CM Punk has won back the AEW World Championship. So, dang, both Mox and CM Punk are now two-time AEW World Champions. It's crazy. And then, all of a sudden, all bloodied up, battered and bruised, the lights go out, and pretty much, you know, you hear the audio of a phone call about bringing a certain somebody back, you know, working out you know, a deal or whatnot. And then that same person that was dressed as the Joker shows up on the on the grid, on the, you know, the Titantron or whatever, and takes his mask off, and then you see the signature scarf, the signature MJF scarf. Music kicks in, the lights come on, MJF enters the arena and it is revealed that MJF is indeed the Joker he's the Joker and we know that the Joker got the poker chip and therefore MJF is owed an AEW World Championship opportunity and this renews, once again, a rivalry that we're familiar with in CM Punk and MJF. And I think it's only a matter of time. Maybe, perhaps, it happens at full gear. I don't know. But it's now only a matter of time before we see MJF as AEW World Champion. It's coming. It's definitely coming. And, you know... I think it's just going to be one of those things where they're going to do whatever they necessarily have to do to keep MJF here in AEW. Because there's been a lot of mixed opinions on what may happen if he would have went and landed at WWE. Which, of course, it would all come down to how he gets booked. But one thing's for sure, MJF is definitely a star, had quite a crowd reaction when he entered, when he was revealed, and 
quite a way to end All Out. Quite a way to end All Out. And yeah. Overall, it was a good show. You know, 15 matches, a lot of matches. It was a good show. Most of the matches were good. You know, there were there were only a few that were pretty trashy. Like I said, the TBS uh, championship, trash. Uh, the match between... Uh, the match between... Uh, Christian Cage and Jungle Boy, which, like I said, I kind of understand, despite it being the quickest match. Christian's injured. He's nursing an injury. So, but for the most part, All Out was a pretty good pay per view. It was a pretty good pay per view. So, yeah, definitely enjoyed it. So now. We got, uh, I think the next few events we got coming up are, I think, Dynamite Grand Slam. And then, you know, we got the push towards the full gear in November. Full gear in November. So, that's what we got to look forward to uh, for AEW. But, we'll see what happens. But overall, I thought this was a pretty good pay-per-view. But anyway, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. What did y'all think of the card? What did y'all think of the matches? What were your favorite matches? Like I said, for me, my top three were um, the AEW World Trios Championship match, uh, swer the AEW World Tag Team Championship match. That was actually uh, my favorite. That, that was my favorite. Like, hands down, that was my favorite. And you know what? I have to say, you know, after some thinking, I have to say that that Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii would be my third. So th those, I'd have to say, were my top three. Were my top three. But great matches overall. But let me know what y'all's thoughts are. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. For another Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm Jason Ingram. Once again, have a blessed and happy Labor Day. Enjoy the day off. And I will see y'all in the next video. Um, look forward to the next video being of uh, Worlds Collide. I'm going to actually watch that on Labor Day with my dad um, in the early afternoon. So look forward to my uh, review video on that. So until then, God bless. Peace out.